let's look at an example. Suppose I have some hypothesis that says that m is equal to m1x plus b. I go and I run my experiment. So I got a measurement of x is 1. I made this measurement. I let x be 1 again, did it again. I got a different measurement. I let x equals 2. I got that measurement. Let x equals 2. We got that measurement. x equals 3. I got that and that. And notice x is 1. I get the same number, but they're close, but they're a little different. So there's no way this is going to be consistent, and I cannot solve this. Right? I can't be equal to this and this at the same time, no matter how close they are, as long as they're different. And same thing with, uh, with the other measurements. But I want these to be as close as possible. Notice that I'm plugging in x is 1, and then uh, I get m1 plus b by just plugging in x equals 1 into there is equal to the y value. So for this row, I plug in x equals 1, y equals 3.2, and I get that. For this row, I plug in x equals 2, y is 3.2, oops, sorry, 3.8. To get that equation, I could do that all the way down. And now I have a system of equations where my unknowns are m1 and b. And I can find the coefficients here by looking at these coefficients here. So m1 is 1, coefficient on 1, or b is 1, and that should be a 3.1. Come across here, coefficient on m1 is 1, coefficient on b is 1, and that should be 3.2. And I can do that all the way down until I get to the last row. And this last row, my coefficient on m1 is 3, coefficient on b is 1, and that's going to be 5.3. So now I have this thing, and again, this is not equals. Hopefully it's close though. So let's look at this. So now I've got these x's and these y's. If I graph these things, I have this. Again, they're not in a nice line, so I cannot make these line up no matter how close they are. If they're not on top of each other, that's all I can do. My goal though is to figure out what's the best I can do in trying to find a line that will minimize these errors. So again, so let's go back to this. I've got this system of equations. I can now write this as a matrix. So my matrix A, I've got m1 times 1 plus 1 times b is 3.1, which comes from there. m1 times 1 plus 1 times b is 3.2, which comes from there. 2 times m1 plus b is 3.8, which comes from there. I can do that for all of these rows. So I get this system of equations. This is my residual. And what is it I want? I want the residual to be perpendicular to the columns of A, which is saying that I want A transpose R to be 0. So this is my R. That's my residual. I multiply through by the A transpose. I add A transpose to be to both sides. This matrix right here, A A transpose, is going to be a square matrix. This is going to be a vector. So in this case, what do I have? Here's my A. This comes just from copying from the previous page. This is my A transpose. This is the A transpose, and this is the B. And if I multiply that out, so I go. Uh, it's going to be a 2 by 2, so I go to find the first row, first column, I take 1 times 1, plus 1 times 1, plus 2 times 2, plus 2 times 2, plus 3 times 3, plus 3 times 3, and just do that for the whole matrix. This right here is my A transpose A. This is, oops, A transpose B. And now I just need to solve this system of equations for my m1 and my b. And I can do this using the tools we've already seen throughout the class. So now this is a standard problem solving the linear system. And if I solve this, and I can go through that because we've done that too many times, um, I can figure out the values for m1 and b. I'm just going to show you the MATLAB code you can use to do this. So here, my first row for the A matrix was 1, 1. Second row was 1, 1. 
third row was 2-1, fourth row was 2-1, then 3-1, 3-1. And notice I separate the rows with a semicolon. So that defines my A. Same thing with B. First row was 3.1, then 3.2 on down. So here's my B. In MATLAB, to find the transpose, you use an apostrophe. So this is the MATLAB notation for transpose is A apostrophe. And so now this is going to be equal to A transpose A. On the right hand side I have A transpose B. And now I want to solve this system. So what do I have? I have something that looks like, um, I'll just call this B times X equals L. The MATLAB notation, so I could do this, I could find the inverse of this matrix and then multiply by the inverse. In practice though, you really want to avoid finding the inverse of a matrix because it's notoriously uh, causes problems in terms of accuracy and it also takes a long time to do. So the MATLAB notation that says to solve this system right here is use a uh, whatever that is, backslash, use the matrix, and then the right-hand side vector. So this right here is my approximation for M1, and that's my approximation for B. So my best uh, estimate for that straight line is the slope is 1.05 and the y-intercept is 2.0167. All right, let's look at another example. Now suppose we have a, uh, we run an experiment, and for this experiment, what do we have? We're going to have three things we don't know. So here, we have some value z is equal to m1x plus m2y plus b. I run the experiment. I let x equals minus 3, y equals minus 3, and I measure a z is 2.54. So this says that 2.54 is minus 3m1, minus 3m2, plus b. I ran the experiment a second time. I let x equal minus 3, y is minus 2. And I measured a value of z being 2.26. And so now I had 2.26 is minus 3m1, minus 2m2, plus b. And you just keep doing that all the way down. So for example, this row right here, Right? I measured, I let x be 2, y be 2, and then I got a measurement of z of 2.55. So I had 2.55 is 2 times m1 plus 2 times m2 plus 1 times b. Uh, and I should be careful here. This not really equals, right? You want this to be as close as possible. But if I were to do row reduction on this, it's not going to be consistent because of the errors that we measured in this data. And now, be careful here, this right here is my matrix A. This is my right-hand side vector, or B. And I want to do the least squares approximation to figure out what's the best approximation for M1, M2, B. So there's my A, there's my B, and in this case, my residual is going to be AX minus B, where X is going to be the slope 1, slope 2 and B. And just as before, if I take A transpose times the residual, I want to get 0. The residual is AX minus B. If I multiply that through, I get A transpose AX minus A transpose B is 0. And if I add A transpose B to both sides, what am I going to get is that equation right there. And I went into MATLAB and I calculated um, A transpose A. This is the matrix I got. I calculated A transpose B. Let me be careful here. I slipped into MATLAB notation. A transpose B. That's the vector I got. And then I solved it in MATLAB. Oops, let me be a little more careful here. So this is A transpose times A backslash 
a transpose times b and this was the results uh, spit out so that's my approximation for m1 my approximation for m2 and my approximation for my intercept b okay last thing quick note um, actually this should be an a transpose there doesn't matter what's important here is I've got this matrix right here. Uh, what happens in practice is that these are very big matrices. In fact, there's a lot of um, measurements that you make in practice. And this matrix right here tends to have very poor numerical properties. If you try to do row reduction on this, you're going to end up getting a lot of round off errors, and a lot of error creeps in every time you do a row operation. So in practice, this is a kind of a notorious problem for being hard to solve. And we don't necessarily do row operations on something like this. Instead, the thing to notice is that A transpose A is symmetric. Why is that? If I take A transpose A, take the transpose, I'm going to get A transpose from there. And then this is going to be A transpose transpose. A transpose transpose is the original matrix. So right, and this came from taking A transpose A transpose. This matrix is symmetric and um, has um, nice properties in that sense. So what we tend to use is something called a QR decomposition. So instead of trying to do this doing like LU decomposition or um, row operations to solve this, it turns out that this is doing a QR decomposition is a little more numerically stable. And what's special about Q is that the transpose of Q is its inverse. So this is what's called an orthogonal matrix. And R is an upper triangular matrix. So what you can do is this, is if you can multiply both sides by the transpose of Q, This, because Q transpose is the identity matrix, or sorry, is the inverse of Q, this just becomes um, I. And now you can use back substitution on this because that's an upper triangular matrix.